This is our second video lesson on Chapter 10, Signaling. In this lesson we'll be looking at two general types of receptors. First we're going to look at the G-protein coupled receptor, or GPCR. The name comes from the fact that it's a receptor that's coupled to another type of protein called a G-protein. In each of the cases that we'll look at, the initial signal is the binding of the ligand to the receptor. And remember that always causes a conformational change in this transmembrane protein. That's our first message. And that's illustrated here on the right. Our ligand in blue binds to this G protein coupled receptor in purple. That's going to start this whole process. As the ligand binds the receptor, and the conformation of that receptor changes, it's now able to interact with an adjacent G protein. You'll notice that the G protein is also at the membrane. The name G protein comes from the fact that it binds guanine nucleotides, either GTP or GTP. And we'll see how that cycle works a little bit later. So here we have our ligand bound receptor that has been conformationally altered, it now interacts with the G protein and that converts the G protein from an inactive red to an active green in this illustration. Now our active G protein can interact with another protein or enzyme and communicate that signal. And that's what's illustrated here. Here we have our active G protein. It's it's in turn activating this enzyme and that enzyme is going to create our second message, our second messenger. These are nucleotides, nucleotide derivatives, sometimes portions of lipids as we'll see. The important thing to remember here is that these second messengers are always diffusible and that's because their role is to communicate that message and take it from the membrane to where it needs to go. Think of these second messengers as a bicycle messenger. It's going to pick up its message at the home office, that's where the membrane is, but it has to deliver that message to some other location and that's why it has to be able to move, it has to be diffusible. It's going to initiate some change in a cellular activity. When we've created that second messenger, we have now converted our external signal to an internal signal or messenger. The second type of receptor we'll look at is referred to as a receptor tyrosine kinase. So it's a receptor it, that has kinase activity. I think this is the first time we've looked at this term. A kinase is an enzyme that transfers a phosphoryl group to some molecule. And that's true for this receptor. So this receptor actually has enzymatic activity. It transfers a phosphoryl group. In this case also, the initial signal is the binding of the ligand to the receptor and that causes a conformational change. In this case, because the enzyme is a kinase, it transfers a phosphoryl group and that's going to be taken from ATP and it autophosphorylates itself. In other words, it has cytoplasmic domains, you can see there are two here, and one domain will phosphorylate the other. So it autophosphorylates itself and that activates it as a kinase or enzyme. Now the amino acid residue to which that phosphoryl group is attached is tyrosine and that's why they're referred to as tyrosine kinases. And that's the full name of receptor tyrosine kinase. Now we have our active ligand receptor complex. The cytoplasmic domains have been phosphorylated and so now it will function as a kinase. And now it can activate or inhibit a protein or enzyme. And typically the next enzyme is another kinase. In this example here's kinase 1. It's going to be activated by the receptor tyrosine kinase. And so it goes from inactive red to active green and notice it's been phosphorylated. This also is a kinase and so it will in turn act upon the next member in our cascade, our kinase 2. And that will convert it from inactive red to green active. And so notice it also has been phosphorylated. So there are often many steps in this. Remember the fibrin cascade that we looked at in chapter 5? So a very similar type of activation cascade and the end effect is that there's some change in metabolic activity or gene expression. 
In our next video lesson, we want to look at a specific example of a G-protein coupled receptor. We'll look at the beta adrenergic receptor. We also want to see what kind of changes take place in that G-protein and what are the downstream effects.